Pete, it's great to have you with us. Uh, we're going to do something that we've never done before on uh, breaking the ice here, and that's going to be uh, starting with an icebreaker. So you're going to be our first uh, try on this. Uh, sure. We had a question that we wanted to ask you. Um, when it comes down to it, are you an original Twisters uh, movie guy or the sequel? I'm an original. I'm an original. Oh, OG. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, gotcha. yeah the, the sequel <laughs> wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for the original. All, all original, yeah. Honestly, well, we I haven't seen the, so the sequel, Twisters. I haven't even seen that one. Right. Uh, right. We're kind of cutting off the image there. Yeah. I guess I'm cutting it off. There should be an S. Right yeah. Here. yeah, right over, right yeah. over, Sorry yeah, about over that. there. So that's Jeff's <laughs> fault. His his big noggin ball of noggin got in the way uh, there. So, hey, we're going to uh, switch over to a video real quick. We want to uh, roll this real quick, and we're going to be right back. We're going to get you introduced and jump into the interview. So uh, cool. just bear with us for a moment. If you need a jaw-dropping practical effect, call on Oscar-winning special effects master John Fraser. He's the man behind some of the best bad weather movies in the business, like Twister. To make hail for 1996's Twister, John and company had to invent a machine that would mimic Mother Nature. We went to a plastics, plastics company in Los Angeles, and they tried to help us out, make little cubes of hail, and which they could do. But the biggest problem that we had with, with that is, number one, it was very expensive, and number two, the cleanup. You have to collect it all. You got to collect it all. You got to get rid of it. Right. And so we thought, you know what? Why don't we just try to make real hail? The great thing about it is not only did it look good, was it just goes away. So it is just water. It's just ice. There's it's no chemical ice. or no anything chemical, else. No chemical, nothing. What about CGI? Is, is CGI taken over this kind of thing, or is there still use for the real hail? As great as the CG uh, instrument is, it's just better when it's live, especially when it's hitting you on the head or, or it's raining and that water is running off your umbrella. John's practical effects force actors to get in character fast. Now he's going to recreate a scene from Twister, hopefully without the Twister. Here it comes. Huh? And you don't have to clean it up. I thought movies were supposed to be fake. I can't believe that we're, we're in the middle of Burbank. It's a sunny day, and I got big chunks of ice raining down on me. Now, this is what we did for three months in the wheat fields of Oklahoma. Look at these <laughs> Look at this. That's huge. So how do they make this hellish hail so convincing? Say hi to Pete DeGrandis. Hey, Pete. How you doing? Pete supplied John with about 60 tons of ice to create the hail and twister. OK, we got hail. Hail. We got hail. So Pete, that video there, uh, when I first watched that, I had, it, it, I don't want, it's not a top 10 movie, but it's a movie that's own. I'm always just going to leave it on there and it kind of runs in the background or if I've got something going on. Uh, I've really enjoyed that movie uh, when it came out. And when I saw that you were involved and Arctic was involved in helping with that, that was, uh, I was like, dude, that's, that's pretty sweet. I've known you for quite some time. I knew that you had had some Hollywood ties, but, um, 
Dude, that was a blockbuster you were part of. Tell us about that and, you know, just your adventure with that. Well, um, it, what it was, the, the special effects coordinator is one of the greatest ever, John Frazier. He has done, you know, the, 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 the Batman movies, Armageddon, um, Perfect Storm, all, all, all the big stuff. So when Twister came along, it was before that stuff, um, they knew they were going to have some hail sequences. You know, they had rain and stuff. So the hail, they had to figure out how they were going to do that. And so they first were experimenting with like uh, plastic, little plastic shards. And they were going to have to have all that made. And if they were going to do it in Oklahoma. It would have just been a big mess even trying to clean that stuff up. So they figured, well, let's try and it's possible to do it real. So his shop in, was uh, right near the company I was working for at the time. And uh, in Sun Valley, in the San Fernando Valley here in L.A., and um, they came in and knew that we had ice crushers because we had made snow before. And um, so they wanted to know if it was possible to make hail. And so what we did is slow the ice crusher down because basically it's a machine. It was built a long time ago. These machines were built a long time ago for snowing down, you know, boat hulls and, 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 and train cars and stuff before like refrigeration. So what, what we do is we take 300 pound blocks and feed them into this machine that literally crushes and pulverizes it down to snow. Well, the crusher is a one to one with the with the um, with an impeller. So the faster you run the motor, the finer it crushes it down and makes snow, which is usually what we blow out to make snow seeds. So to do hail, we took off this hose and pointed it up and we just idled it. And what ended up happening is, I mean, a perfect storm of hail, really. It just, it, it came out just like perfect. So everyone was ecstatic. We figured, you know what, we're going to do this. And now it's just going to melt, right? It's just water. Yeah. yeah right. So what had happened, one, one thing with it is when they did a test with it, they had a director of photography and they wanted to see how it looked. So he got in a car with a lens. It was like a long lens. And he stood in the back seat and we got the ice crusher and a block and went down the street because he just wanted to see how it was going to look, the, the contrast of it as it hit the, the windshield. So <laughs> it, 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 he was worried that we weren't going to be able to see Yeah, because it was... It Break was any windshields? Do, no, 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 it wasn't. No. But what he was, he anticipated that there wasn't going to be much of a contrast. So they wanted to make the ice really opaque. So we took milk and poured it into the tanks. And mm -hmm. so now we had these 300 pound blocks that were white as white could be. So we have the test this day and direct direct photography's there and John Frazier's there and all these people there. They're in the car. And we start going down the street and we start lobbing this stuff and it's falling perfect right on the windshield and he's happy and stuff except shortly after the milk kind of <laughs> separated from the ice and it looked like a flock of seagulls had flown by <laughs> nice. like nice. like it, <laughs> the seagulls are crapping out uh, blocks no, of ice yeah. huh? <laughs> but, but in the end in the end it was just regular 300 pound blocks of ice yeah, I would imagine, you know, obviously ice, you know, the the damage that comes from hail is obviously that uh, the hail reaches terminal velocity and you guys weren't lofting it up to the stratosphere. So it's yeah. not like it was coming down, but uh, that's super cool. I mean, I assume you guys had to figure it out uh, and, and you're like, well, I guess we probably can try that. Let's see what <laughs> happens, you know, and do, do you have any idea how how many tons of ice that you guys? Or I that think they it was. Uh, uh, I think it was about 40 tons. Okay. 40, 40, 40 tons. Yeah. Of, of, of block that they, so yeah, it was, it was a lot of blocks. 40, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 40. Yeah. I think it was about 40 tons or so that they ended up doing for those, those sequences. Look, I'm going to go ahead and tell everybody that uh, if nobody noticed that um, I'm going to say Pete crunches numbers a good bit. Cause he's got that calculator. I mean, it, <laughs> right he knew right where it was. And that was an old school calculator. That was not a, you know, that was what you got a little LED screen, right? I can't that, that my head as fast as anymore. <laughs> no, right. that, that's awesome, man. That's a uh, really cool. So uh, if you don't know Pete, Pete is the senior plant manager for Arctic Glacier at the Vernon, California location. 
And as such, he's had a very interesting career in working closely with atmospheric effects and serving the TV and film industries. We're so happy to have you on today, Pete DeGrandis. Yeah, yeah thanks good seeing you guys. I've known Ethan for a long time, so yeah. we see him at the conventions all the time. But yeah, good to be here, guys. So we'd like to uh, follow uh, follow it up with a question about, I saw atmospheric effects, and I'm, I'm wondering, can you tell me about that? Is that a separate company? Is it a part of Arctic Glacier? Is it a category in the industry? Well, it's a, it's a category in the industry in the effects part, but it's a service that Arctic Glacier provides. And, and atmospheric effects really being limited to like snow and hail, which obviously we have the resources to do. So um, it's it's um, way back in, in kind of the wintry scene creating Hollywood days, they would use like, uh, you know, they'd have foam. In fact, to this day, if you go back and look like uh, it's a wonderful life, you know, mm-hmm. and Jimmy Stewart walking, running through, you know, you'll see if you look close at their feet, um, in the old movies, you'll see it kind of gooping along their shoes. That was foam. And they experimented with, with potato suds one, or potato flakes one time, which was a real disaster. <laughs> when that got wet, it would just clump oh. up around your shoes. It was a mess to clean up. So the, the, first, the first job I remember that, that they, they took these ice crushers and stuff, and I, I, was, I was like 15 years old, was um, North Dallas 40. Remember the old movie? It was they snowed down the perimeter of the, of the Coliseum. It never got used in the film, but um, from that point, anyways, Hollywood, the special effects people, instead of um, moving a, a production, you know, up into the hills or back east, uh, they would bring us to the back lot of Universal Studios, and we would just cover New York Street. So, it became a real, you know simple way to, 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 to create real, you know, wintry, wintry scenes. Was, was it a childhood dream or just happenstance that you, you found yourself into helping with movie production? Well, I, primarily I was in the ice business, you know, I was doing the ice in the traditional, you know, delivering and, and I did made my rounds through, through every aspect of it. But, um, the, 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 the studio part of it is effects. It's the food service part, That's primarily where where you know we, we grew it. The the, the, the caterers, um, the craft service people, and um, you, you know so that was delivering you know regular ice where we put like ice boxes on 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 back lots or take it out on location. So that's mm-hmm. primarily the entry into the studios. Then it was dealing with the special effects people where we really grew and the snowmaking park became more and more of a, a convenient and a cost-effective option. Yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about, you know, your your main gig with uh, Arctic uh, Glacier there. So uh, we got a website that we'll just kind of bring up. And if you want to tell us a little bit, you know, maybe a, a day in the life of what you do with uh, Arctic. And we just happened to have Steve Ward not too long ago uh, uh, with us. So, uh, you know, this this isn't an Arctic uh, uh, Glacier, you know, promo video that we're doing today. And uh, but, you know, it's, it's just so happened that uh, we I knew Pete again, you were help with the industry uh, uh obviously from the ice and and but just a fascinating interview so we wanted to have you on as well but tell us uh, about your company so um my my role is the uh, senior plant manager for the vernon facility which i'll say is one of the flagships of the company um you know in southern california and um i've been with um arctic since well when they bought us we were union ice originally um brett wilberg hired me back in may of 1999 and that was a the whole nother fun story but um shortly after that arctic glacier bought union ice and we've had a few regime changes since then but um i've I've, I've always held the role kind of wore a few hats because you know we had the exposure with the studios a lot of that high maintenance business so um it's been I, i love my job because not only do i get to manage one of the best plants there are. Um, um, I, yeah, I get to do, deal with customer service and and everything, all of the above. So, you know, um, 
I, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy it. It's not just, you know, routine, just do it. Yeah. You know, yeah, I get to do it all. What, what's your capacity? What do you got? What can you guys produce there? 700 tons is what we're rated at. Okay, 700 right. tons. If you'd said that a second ago, I apologize. So uh, that's, that's pretty impressive. So we're going to talk a bunch more about the entertainment industry and your your experiences with it. But I want to get in one other icebreaker before we start on those series of questions. Okay. So I want to know, is it true that you're a fitness instructor? Yeah, I, I've taught spin. I'm a, I'm a cyclist, but... I, 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 I teach spin. Yeah. I haven't, okay. I haven't, yeah, we've got some other stuff going on right now, so I haven't had time to do it, but, um, yeah, I've taught spin for know, seven, eight years, which, so, which was great because it was, you know, when, when the weather was bad or I, I, you know, didn't work out, then they were my workouts as well. Okay. Well, yeah. and I wanted to kind of follow up with that. Uh, do you enjoy doing like real long bike rides? Of oh yeah. Of yeah. Oh yeah, those are great. They, they have um, century rides, they're called. Okay. And yeah, so it's a hundred mile ride, you know, in a, in a day, and they have them in great spots around Southern California. I mean, down down the coast, up in the mountains. You know, there's been some pretty pretty epic rides, but yeah, it, it's a it's a long day on a bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred miles. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah, that's that that's a that's a. You, long. You, <laughs> People would say, you know, they like when the Tour de France comes along and they'd like, oh, how do you sit and watch someone ride a bike, you know, all, all day long? And, and it's it's like, get on and try it. I mean, you know, that you talk about 100 miles in a day. Those guys are doing 100, 106 miles every day for 22 days. It's right. It's right. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, no, that that's absolutely incredible. Uh, you know what they're able to do and push their body. So I've got a buddy of mine uh, went to high school uh, with, and uh, he got pretty uh, pretty involved into uh, cycling. And um, but it's something that you can do lifelong, right? Because I oh, mean, yeah. they, you you're able to push your body, but you're not putting a, a ton of pressure on your joints and everything with cycling. Except the e bikes, I haven't transitioned to that yet. I don't know if I'll ever do that. Maybe if I'm like, you know, eighty. 90 maybe I'll, I'll get an e-bike but until then uh, i'm not doing it now oh you're talking about the e-bikes that uh you're talking about has the batteries uh, yeah 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 oh okay yeah. gotcha gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we, we we clown those guys hard we yeah but. well let's jump over we want to chat uh talk about pete the person and your family and uh we've got some pictures that we'd like to uh, kind of roll through and you give oh. us uh tell us about your family here so I got two two kids. Um, San, uh, Otavia is the oldest. She's 19 now, and then Santino's the boy. He's uh, 17. He'll be 18 uh, in November. Um, both of them were two months premature, so it was a it was a long road and a, a a lot of a lot of nights in the NICU, you know, in the hospital and stuff. But you'd you'd never know it now. They um, they've um, they're doing great. They're both killing it in school. Um, you know, both anxious to, to work as Otavia or her, 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 her quinceanera. My, my, my wife's a, a Latina, she's from El Salvador. So they have the, the quinceanera. That was, that was that picture there. But, yeah, um, I, I'm lucky you guys, I'm really lucky. They, they've got great, great attitudes. They're, they're really socially very healthy. Um, and, um, I remember growing up one of the greatest and there's Odette, my wife there in the pink, in the pink. But uh, I think as a parent, one of the greatest compliments you can ever have, and we got this quite a bit as they were in elementary school, is other parents asking if your kids can hang out with theirs or spend the night. And I always found that to be a, a nice compliment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because there's some kids that come over and you're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> the little huge nice shirts. Well, uh, yeah, I was going to say definitely at work, you can see with the uh, diamond plate, uh, that's, that's some type of cooling system you guys are a uh, trailer that you got rocking there. So yeah. now, now uh, is this uh, near your house or is this just at uh, another uh, area? For photos? These were senior shots. I believe they were taken. Um, and so, um, yeah, this is, this isn't, this is, yeah, this is near my house up, up in a, in a community. Um, a gated community and stuff they have up there, but they have a clubhouse that the, they open up for stuff like this to take photographs. 
Right, great. Like said, you know, he's a pitcher. He, he's, he, was, he pitched in high school and then didn't know if he was going to do it in college, but he's, he's, he's pitching now in college. Cool. He's got a strapping, uh, strapping uh, young man there. I mean, what, yeah, how tall is he? I'm sorry. How tall is he? I mean, he looks he's like taller a than me now. Player. He's like six one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he yeah. just he just sprouted up, but and that there's my yeah. I'm I'm all about two wheels, you guys. So motorcycles <laughs> I've been doing since I don't know, twelve years old. So yeah. these these two are are in the industry. That's Tony Horizon in the middle. Ooh, I do okay. even recognize Tony. Yeah, okay. That's only that. And then Andy Nicholson on the left. Yeah. Okay. Well, good grief. Yeah. I, you know, I, I guess I just wasn't paying attention. I, you had the cool man look right there and the other guys just happened to be there. You know, well, you well, your- Tony's oh. fast. Actually, they're both faster than I am, but, but um, yeah, Tony, it was Glacier Ice. And then you guys all, everybody knew um, Andy's father, one of the, the great ones, yeah. John Nicholson. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we miss him. That's Santino. He, he made it up to black belt in Taekwondo. Yeah. Is he uh, still, ha- still practice or, you know? No, nah, no. Nah, he, he, he's not. Once, yeah. Yeah. I was the same way. I got my black belt when I think I was 13 or 14 years old and I couldn't kick my way out of a wet paper bag now. So. <laughs> this is when yeah. he got his black belt and that's me holding him in the NICU. Yeah, you're you're kicked back like you just had the baby. So uh, you 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 you're, you're lean back, man. <laughs> so yeah, this was uh, uh, you said he was in the NICU for a while, and then uh, this is coming back out, or or, or well, were you in the- well, as an infant when he was first born, he was in there for for that's his isolate there. He was there for two months, but no, this is um, I'm trying to think how old he was. Uh, you know, maybe seven or eight years old when he got it. He got his black belt. Dude, that's awesome, man. Man, it's a, it's a yeah. I, I mean, there's still things that uh, I'm 48 now, so it's been a long, golly, it's been a long time uh, <laughs> since I've got it. But I mean, there's still things that you know resonate uh, with me from still getting in at an early age. So, got you. Uh, is this uh, from the same or a different event? It looks like this was this was Otavia's quinceanera. Okay. So this is like her and I, you know, like the the the, the father daughter dance. So we rehearsed that for a little bit. That's yeah. yeah, that's him graduating. He actually he just started his first year in college. He's seventeen, but there's there's wow. one of, yeah, it's one of the cycling events. I think yeah. you could take to one of the e bikes, man. I think you got it in you. you, you no, no <laughs> ain't happening, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet. Hey, I I, I can appreciate that. So yeah, uh, Tommy's graduation. There's a dead on the left. Yeah. You got a beautiful family, man. So that's uh, you know fantastic. what, and time flies. I, I, uh, you know, you you all heard the same. A friend of mine told me once when I when the kids were just born, and uh, we were talking. In fact, it was one of my buddies in the studios, and and we were talking about it and stuff. And he's walking away, and and I'm going. And he, he goes, Pete. And I turn around, and what he said was absolutely true. He goes, "Don't blink," and <laughs> damn, man, it goes fast. It goes yeah. really fast. They're just crawling across the floor in diapers. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've got two in college uh, now. I've got yep. uh, one that's a, a, a freshman in high school, and Tom's, Tom's smoking through. So, man, it's, yep. uh, it's We're crazy. all a bunch of old guys. I mean, that's I've right. got two in college as well, and it's uh, it, it flies. It's been fun. Yeah. yeah, it's been fun. I hope it gets more fun yeah, um, that's right. as they get older. Um, so, Pete, I uh, wanted to start um, – you know, on the entertainment industry questions, I want to ask you just the one that I think would be the most interesting is, have you ever been completely wrong about your impression of a Hollywood star that you've interacted with, whether you had a bad impression and they surprised on the upside or maybe the opposite? You know, because I I don't usually, because of our part in it, we're kind of creating, you know, the set. So I don't usually interact with the talent as much, okay? Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm there and I watch them, and you can tell the ones that are just down to earthers and they're really cool, and then you can tell the prima donnas, <laughs> and in some of them it's just really disappointing, you know. I mean, I I can tell you know the, the good stuff, guys, but I don't know you know dropping names on the the bad ones, but you know some of them are disappointing <laughs> to the point where you know we've done. I remember well, doing the music. Is- 
do you want it to go viral or not go viral? No, yeah, I, I, I don't want to name drop the bad stuff, you know, yeah. but, but, but some of them I'll tell you, it's, it, it's to the degree where like when you come on set, you're given a heads up, almost a warning to not make eye contact. It's like they don't want anybody to make eye contact with them. And I'm like, I, okay, you know, all right, whatever. Yeah. But, but then you've got then you've got some of the veterans. We we didn't do snow on it, but I remember um, the, the, the it was one of the Ocean's Eleven movies when when Al Pacino was in, in the, the the bank. His casino was at Warner Brothers, and I remember going because I, I I mean that's he's cinematic royalty, right? I wanted to go watch him work, and and we did the the, the ice for the craft service, but. I remember when they broke for lunch and he went, sat right down with everybody. You know, they got their trailers and all that stuff. And he came and sat with the crew. Stuff like that's cool. Arnold's, Arnold's, Arnold Schwarzenegger is really fun. Cool. Uh, I could see that with Arnold. You know, I wouldn't have known that about Al Pacino. uh, But, you know, I. That's, that's pretty cool because I, I, you know, you hear the stories about some of the, the folks that you, you get in, and I gotta have my trailer at this temperature. You gotta gotta have cherries. I gotta, yeah, you know, everything's just right, gotta M&Ms be M Ms only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, yeah. But so your freedom, whenever you were working on set or you were doing something like that, uh, did it depend on which production that you were on, or did they allow you guys to kind of hang around a little bit longer and kind of? watch what was going on or, or well, we're, at, at the time we're, we're part of the crew so you no. know we we can do whatever we want where where things change is like if it's a if it's a new car you know or or some some of like um you know some of the um um where there's characters let's say it's, it was batman or i remember one of the captain america ones where there's like no cameras you get you get you know uh, uh, caught taking a picture you know mm-hmm. it's a bust yeah but um yeah we got free reign pretty much we could do whatever because again we're we're part of the crew at the time but you just you know there's some etiquette sometimes but a lot of times you just you don't openly sit there and start taking pictures so so obviously you've been on some blockbusters have you ever been on any uh low budget and just like man they're giving us sardines and crackers you know what i mean <laughs> as far as our break food uh no not really the most of the you'll, film you'll let, hey i hear what you're saying i'll i'm pete de i only work on blockbusters so. <laughs> yeah. but, but we, some of the yeah no um I don't remember. I mean, some of them didn't do too good. I mean, they did. We worked on the remake of when they redid The Shining, not the first one with Jack, but when they redid it and um, we were up in uh, the Stanley Hotel, I think up in Colorado. And that was a huge production. But um, I don't I don't think that it really ever did did well, did, did much. But you just never know. You know, I mean, there's there's just tens and some hundreds of millions of dollars that go into productions and it, you just never know how they're going to do. Are you a, a starstruck kind of guy? Nah, 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 nah. You've been around. They're just one just another person that yeah, goes home and people. Yeah. goes to the bathroom like everybody else. You know, right, right, right. Uh, so, yeah. so we want to go ahead and share some of the pictures. Yeah, I, I did want to ask one more question before we hopped over there. You got, I, I know you couldn't tell us anything. Do, are there anything coming up? Uh, that may be coming out in the next few years that you guys know. Again, I'm not asking for specifics unless you can tell us. We'd love for you to break news. <laughs> but uh, y'all, y'all got anything coming up? Um, nothing, nothing right now. What we're doing though right now, Ethan, is a lot of commercials. So um, we're, you know, the great again, the great thing about the snow business is as we transition out of the summer, the, you know, the, the the high peak of the you know the busy season for the mm-hmm. ice business. Obviously, we start transitioning into what is arguably just as busy in December, which is snow. And so October, November is when the studios start shooting their their wintry Christmas Christmassy commercials, you know, like the you'll see the Mercedes on the driveway with the big red bow and all the snow on the drive. That's you know, so we just did a um, a Home Depot commercial the other night. Um, but so a lot of that stuff's happening now. But as far as features, I don't I don't we're not on anything now. It's just one of those ancillary things. You see a commercial and the first thing that comes to my mind is not, I wonder where they got that ice from. 
you know, or that snow from, or how did that, I mean, you, you know, you just, you know, it's a Christmas commercial. So you just move along or a movie or like Twister. It's like, oh man, it's really hailing there. I mean, this is crazy. Yeah. Never in my wildest dream was, okay, how did they produce that? But it's just like our episode that we had about plastics and how plastics yeah. are made and the extrusion. And I mean, you just, we take it for granted as a, a society of, of all the little things that go into making a movie and you guys are, uh, one of those cogs uh, that uh, that makes it all happen. So that's and, and I automatically look like when I see some ice and stuff like that, I'll automatically look and like especially the old stuff. You know, again, you'll kind of look at the, as a talent walks over and, and one of the when uh, Arnold did was Mister Freeze, one of the Batman ones. If you look at some of the scenes where there's icicles, you know, you could tell it's just one big piece of plastic because they all kind of wave together. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick up on that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so he's uh, he's snubbing his nose, <laughs> you know, at, well, at some of the, the, the people that didn't use the, uh, the, the right so stuff. So I think uh, what he's saying is he doesn't wear rose colored glasses. He wears ice crystal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes with milk, with milk in it. So. <laughs> yeah, I might get the valve. Well, yeah, yeah, let's get to this picture. Thing. <laughs> so, right, so um, we're just going to kind of cycle through some of these and just speak to them for us. Yeah, this was the premiere of Frozen, and we did the same thing for the premiere of Ice Age, which was really fun because traditionally when they do premieres on Hollywood Boulevard, like in front of the Chinese theater, you know, you'd have the red carpet and the limousines would come up and and uh, the, the stars would get out. Well, uh, they they did this similar with frozen, but also with ice age, um, where instead of the, these were just voiceovers pretty much, but they, instead of limousines, they came in on snowmobiles, you know? And so we <laughs> slow down, awesome. this is Hollywood Boulevard right in front of the El Capitan theater from like Highland to, I forget that first street, first block, but we had snowed all that down. And so the premiere, everybody just walked down the snow. Was that one of the largest snow jobs you guys ever done? Oh, no, 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 the, no. That, that was on some other feature. I think uh, um, for actual movie Frost, Frost, the movie Frost with Michael Keaton was was crazy. It was a big one. Okay. But, yeah. OK, well, we'll roll through a few more of these yeah. here. So this, uh, giant yeah. Uh, ski. Yeah, this, crazy. yeah this, this was this was at the Rose Bowl. This was, uh, you know, Sean White, the Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So he he had some some company that uh, they did this I think in uh, Innsbruck, Beijing, and then LA uh, in, in at the Rose Bowl. And basically it was obviously a a, a, a snowboard jump um, that they built out of scaffolding and then brought us in uh, to cover this. And I think it took us just over seven hundred tons and probably twenty four straight hours to do this. This one went really slow because they just had buckets and we were blown into buckets and they crane it up and, and just keep dumping and dump work the way out. The next time we did it after I'm like, guys, this is crazy. Build me an elevator that I could bring up 300 pound blocks. And then we craned up the crushers and did it in like seven hours. So. Yeah. You got to let it, let it fall. And I assume just correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it, it's, it's going to be more of a natural feel if it's able to be dropped down and not compacted in a bucket and dropped. Right. I mean, even easier to uh, spread out and everything. Right. Well, when we, when we blew it on the, the, the next time they did it, Ethan, we were able to do it with a hose and yeah, and, that's what I'm saying that that, oh, that would be easier to do than oh, the yeah. bucket. Absolutely. The bucket just would clump down and you'd have to break it down and shovel it out. It was, <laughs> yeah, sounds like a nightmare. We got several more uh, that we'll show uh, on that scaffolding because that scaffolding, I mean, it looks robust, but man, that still yeah. it made me look nervous. But uh, what we got here? Yeah, you know, guys, a little a little story with this one, if I can. It was it was pretty cool actually. But uh, back in the '60s, there was a contemporary artist, and his name was Alan Capra, and he built. Um, five or six of these rectangular structures around the LA area. And what was actually cool about it is the block ice at the time came from our Van Nuys facility now, you know, because, and because so back in the sixties, they did it with block ice and the ice was taken from there. But anyways, nobody, nobody knew what, what this was. 
they couldn't they didn't understand what, what, why was he building these structures of ice in this rectangular configuration around LA well when when they redid it the uh, the people from um, um, the, the, the art the contemporary artists for the day came and I got to spend some time with the, yeah this was up by the uh, the, um, the museum the, there, Griffin? Five, the uh, J Paul Getty Museum and so I was talking, I think it was the granddaughter, and she had said that Alan and his wife, I believe, lost a two-year-old. Um, it was like a, like an accident or something they had. So what, what he did was he built these structures out of ice in the, in the form of a coffin. And in his mind, what, the way, again, he kept it quiet, but being ice for weeks, it, as it melted, it was crying. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, yeah. that's some symbology right there. So yeah. in, in you said he did that one time or, or what, what he, he, he did this once, but then there was, they call it, it was called fluids and okay. the exhibit it's, it's, it's an exhibit really. Um, but yeah. some kids came over and they wanted to recreate Alan Capro's fluids and, and they redid it again. This is, this is one of the ones I have a picture somewhere of the, uh, under the Pasadena Bridge nearby, and um, you can see an old Union Ice truck, and they're building it back in the 60s. It's a black and white. So this was the remake of all that. But I don't think the the story really made it around. They just were just some contemporary artists wanting to do one of these. You know, gotcha, gotcha. Ways. Is that around 12, 15 feet wide by 30, 40 feet long? Is yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, about eight feet tall, looks like. Maybe a little bit taller. Man, that's yeah, you uh, see somebody impressive. There. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah very the good. The woman on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get back to some of those other pictures. We just had uh, that picture. I wanted to kind of bring that back uh, up. So let me get us pulled back up here. Well, we're going to go here uh, just because yeah. you got this cool shot of yourself <laughs> right here. So an imperialistic ice man looking. Uh, that was. That was that was just probably coming into the morning of uh, blowing snow all night long. I think that was that was the, the the jump that you saw the original picture. I am looking. Do you know how tall that is? Because I mean, in my mind, that looks like it's 120 feet tall. Oh yeah, yeah, it was. You're almost right on. I think it was like 110, 120 feet. It was, it was yeah. crazy. And the, and the, the guys they had like mountain climbers that they hire. They're like monkeys, you know. And they're they're strapped in, but. The guys building this, these things were. Because I've been to California a good bit, and you know the winds. I mean, I, not to say that they're unpredictable, but you know, you you can catch some winds. I mean, did they have guide wires coming off of that to stabilize it? Because obviously, I can't really tell that. But man, that is tall and skinny. It looks like it could come down like a deck of cards. Yeah, no, that one they didn't. When they they redid one at the at the Coliseum, and I know that there was a storm coming in, and they pulled everybody off of it, and we had to kind of stand down till because there was some winds. Okay, you know, but uh, you know, I mean, I guess maybe some of the stuff that just came through Florida would knock that down easily. But now nah, we haven't. Yeah. You know. yeah, yeah, right. Well, I just think uh, if, if OSHA was involved, I'm not sure that that would have got uh, oh. you know completely yeah. through. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this, this is um, this is getting into some. Of, this is actually Jake Paul's house. The other guy's oh, gonna okay. yeah the, the, the YouTube the one's gonna fight Mike, Mike Tyson. That it's gonna get slaughtered by Mike Tyson. I don't know what I'll say, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um anyways um yeah so this was his house but this is just a, a, a perfect example of the stuff we do in December which is snowing down people's houses. And uh, I tell you guys, what a, what a, a great, great supplemental winter business it is. It, and it is, you know, it, as long as, you know, we'll curious to see how it's going to happen this year, but you know, as long as the, the, the economy is there, people have that kind of disposable income, you know, to put snow on their front yard, it just keeps growing and growing and growing because, and it's so self-selling because once, once you do it and you've got kids or grandkids or the neighbors come over, you're kind of screwed because how do you how do you not do it the next <laughs> year? You know, you yeah, yeah. Well, and the keep keeping up with the Joneses, right, oh, or right. keeping up with oh, the yeah. uh, the polls. So yeah. uh, <laughs> that's funny. So I, when I saw these photos, 
I, I it made me think uh, that this was the Ma- Michael Keaton movie. So is that right, Jack Frost, or no, what I was the name? Was, of this? Uh, no, um, we did Frost actually, but no, that was inside the the the, the, the dome in Long Beach. But this is okay. uh, this might have been a Lowe's commercial or something. But um, I can't remember the specifics of this one. But you can see they've got the 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 snowfall going. They flock in the trees with a with a with a foam. But um, yeah, so, no, this is frost. Is this completely inside a studio, or is it? Is this no, inside this a, a studio? Warehouse? This is a neighborhood. This this might have been up okay. on uh, uh, up on Colonial Street on Universal Studios, where they used to shoot Desperate Housewives. The Munsters' hmm. house is up there. It's like their neighborhood where they shoot a lot. I, that might be I might be up there. It's so funny we're having a conversation. I mean, I've been to a few of these places, but you know, it's just second nature to you and we're like man that's so cool (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's fun um another one of the animated snow ones and just you know snowing down i think that was probably in front of the chinese theater um right but yeah it caught on once once we did ice age then then that was it they anytime they've done again you know frost and this one penguin movie yeah like you said i mean yeah. you know even as a production studio once you do it you're screwed i mean you gotta <laughs> keep exactly. doing it and go big exactly yeah. exactly you set the bar you know it's a, but it works out yeah. great yeah, we already saw that one uh cycling through All right what we got here yeah yeah um new york street at, at at uh at universal studios i think and again just another just wintry okay. scene just snowing it down it didn't look like a California place, so yeah, so yeah. Universal Studios that would make sense uh, where that yeah. was coming from. So, uh, get your advertising out with the truck setting there too. Yeah, oh, yeah, yep. yeah. This is a great cross shot of that structure. That's uh, impressive. But my gosh, that's a that's a structure. Yep. I wonder how long. It, any idea how long it took them to to get this structure put up? Oh, that was what, probably a week and a, two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was it was a, it was a long a long time, but uh, another frozen shot there. And, there and uh, how about this guy? He, he, you know, who's this guy? That's my buddy Danny. He he's he's uh, he moved off to working in the aerospace industry, but he was I miss that guy so much. He 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 would lead all my studio uh, stuff, you know. And okay. um, this is over I think Sony Studios. It was this was a for like a a um, a video game. It's like a video game yep. commercial or something. Yeah, so, was it the one with uh, the Tom Clancy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, well, we we may put that uh, in here and show that because that that was yeah. Uh, oh, you got the cool final. Show. Yeah, you got the final reel for it. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll stick that in here. So Santiago, uh, Santiago Mina is our post production <laughs> guy. So uh, we'll give him a shout out. So what you see and uh, these cuts that we get uh, these videos in. So shout out to Santiago. So what cool. you can do after we publish the video, you'll be able to send him a link and tell him you uh, you got him on air with us uh, breaking the. Yeah, ice. tell him he made the mediocre uh, time. So uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we got here. This was recent. This is, uh, this might've been the Home Depot commercial. Yeah, so okay. this is in the San Fernando Valley. It's on a residential street that they, they constantly shoot on. I think it's because of the deep, the deep front yards and the, the, the architecture of it. But yeah, this was, uh, this was a, a few weeks ago. Okay. This is the Home Depot commercial. Uh, yeah, so this is a little Home bit Depot. closer. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we got that. Ah, uh, we, we, everybody may wow. recognize this guy. <laughs> yeah. And again, there was no snow on that one, but, um, we, we, one of the things that we would make for the shows, like I'd make them for our customer, which was the, the like the craft service of the caterer. And like if the other side of it says Arctic glacier ice and has like our crafts, our customer's name on it. And then on the back, we'll do this here, put the show name and then they'll give it to the crew. So obviously this was that that uh, what was it Ford? I thought it was Ford versus Ferrari. Ford versus yeah, Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. 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 sweet movie. So it's movie. just uh, kind of a souvenir keepsake for the crew and the. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was there. He's a cool guy too. Yeah. yeah. 
So you got uh, got your crew here. That's my boys. Yeah, those are the guys that get it done. Yeah. Right. Man, it looks like you guys are filming. Yeah, it looks like you could film a commercial of Arctic Glacier off of this shot. It looks like the, <laughs> you guys had the uh, all the the lights coming directly down on the uh, uh, on your trailer there. Yeah. All right. Well, we got that. But uh, one thing I want to show you, um, we, we've got something else I want to bring up real quick. Um, we noticed <laughs> this photo here. Oh, We're wondering who. Who is the star? Yeah, who, or this, you got some guy sitting here. I'm not sure. So yeah, um, how, when was this, Pete? You know, um, I I had I was that's me back in uh, it's probably like 20, 22, 23 years old maybe, and I um that that started really just as a, a trip I wanted to take. I was taking uh, uh, photos. I was like a you know photographer. I was younger and wanted to go. This is at the time I wanted to go to. Africa. Not quite sure, guys, what the draw was. Just, I'm like, I knew we were kind of born with the civilization silver spoon in our mouth, you know, and wanted to kind of go yeah, yeah. capture, you know, what was, what suffering was really about, what trouble. Anyways, but uh, my mother was like a little concerned. I was like 17 <laughs> or 18 at the time. She's like, why did you go to Israel? You know, my cousin lives in Haifa. And I'm like, okay. So I go to Israel and while I'm there, my cousin's like, Pete, you're right next door. Go, why don't you go see the pyramids? And I'm like, cool. So I went over and there's just some memories, you guys, that are just burned forever. And I remember leaning up against the Sphinx, the sun's going down and shining right over on the pyramids. And I'm like, there's more than Los Angeles. Yeah. And, and at that point I, I got home, I moved back home. I, uh, I, I saved up where for what me and my brother were going to do that typical, you know, that trip that, you know, your rail passes and staying at youth hostels around Europe. And we left for three months and I ended up being gone for four years. Oh, wow. 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 Okay. Uh, now you, yeah, you, okay. That's, that's pretty serious. I was just going to mention, I had the opportunity, uh, to, uh, Played tennis in college. I was able to go uh, and stay with some uh, buddies in Sweden or one friend in Sweden. I've been able to go to Venezuela and, you know, be able to see things through non-American eyes has been a, a real eye opener to me. Uh, even though I, I was there in Venezuela, I guess about 17 days, it was right before uh, Chavez uh, took over the country. Uh, so it was a very peaceful, very prospering uh, country. Uh, and then Sweden, you know, saw socialism with my very own eyes. Uh, wow. Even at a 19 wow. years old, I could see what, what that was about. So, you know, in, in beautiful countries, beautiful places around the world, I've been able to go. Um, but it's made me have such more of a, a appreciation for, you know, where we live now. Uh, oh, and oh, the things that we have. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It, it, so. It, 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 it's so much a part of a, of a well-rounded education, you know, I mean, you, it, it, and especially just, it's really disappointing. A lot of you see the, the mentality of the generation coming up where, you know, there's tend to be this victim mentality sometimes, but you know, they have really no idea how lucky they are that they can even stand on a corner and protest and speak what they want and, yeah. you know, burn flags and do horrific things like that. In another country, you would disappear. You'd, you'd never be right. seen again, you know. But right. you know, we are blessed. That's yeah, for absolutely. sure. And, and not to get, you know, overtly a political, we don't make this a political show. The, the the part that I have no problems with people protesting, I have no problems, and obviously from a peaceful side of it, if they yeah. want to burn a flag, want to de demonstrate, do those things. What I don't like that I see today is the the overt uh, attempt to censor. Um, and it's things that whether we brought it up here or, or just, you know, censor, censorship is not a part of what this country was founded on. Absolutely right. Country. And that, that's what scares me. And I, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting too old to fight a war, but uh, that's, that's something that I think is uh, fundamental to our success as a country. Yeah, and, I, I, I'm certainly uh, hopeful, and I've, though I've been accused of being the blind optimist a few <laughs> times, but I'm hopeful that this is just 
kind of a blip on our history and it'll all work itself out. Certainly hope so, but I still think it's, uh, as the old adage, freedom ain't free. So, uh, yeah. you know, we have to. I wanted to bring up one thing about this picture. <laughs> All right. oh. Every time I've never had an opportunity to visit the Taj Mahal. I hope maybe in my retirement years, my wife and I can go. But I have never seen a picture where it actually looks real. Every one of them looks fake. Oh. It's so beautiful, so precise. It, like even here, it looks like you're setting like you're setting behind a photo. OK, I mean, how incredible is it in person? Well, it's it's the way it's it's first presented because there's a wall around it. You, you know, you're 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 in, in there's a wall. It's in Agra in Delhi. All right. Yeah. Uh, OK. And, and and when it when you're, you're walking, when it, it just kind of boom comes into view and it's 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 amazing. It's beautiful. I mean, I think it was, I don't know, 20 years in the making and. And I think the Taj Mahal. I'm trying to let me think of my history here. It's it's it was a mausoleum, um, for Mumtaz Mahal was the name I think, and it, it's a mausoleum for the wife of a king or the Raj, whatever who who had died. So when you as soon as you walk in that door, her her casket's right there in the center, and then his is just to the next of it. But yeah, I think every every famous artist around the world was brought in to contribute to this somehow but it is spectacular it's unbelievable so it's almost framed in of itself by the walls that are around it so it gives almost a framing is that what you're saying yeah yeah okay yeah, well, and don't true. worry we'll fact check you on the other so we'll okay. we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll drop some fact check uh, all right, uh, all uh, right. Top of you. So, well, thank you for uh, uh, allowing us and taking us through uh, kind of Hollywood land um, yeah. on that front. So, Jeff? Yeah. So, um, kind of uh, wrapping up the entertainment questions, I, w I just wanted to ask you uh, you shared all those different pictures and everything, but um, looking back on your career, what do you think will be the one that? is the most memorable project that you ever got to work on or the most meaningful to you? Man, Jeff, there, there's, uh, uh, I mean, a, a lot of them. I mean, the, the big, you mean like the scale? Uh, I, I mean, it's, you know, it how you will, you know, jingle all the way was fun with Arnold and, and frost was good. Cause those, those were massive. I mean, you know, frost was at Warner brothers and that was like 250 tons that were, we brought in in trailers and it, it was, it was, it was a workout. It was a concerning job, you know, and the timelines that we had and the people that we had to have and muscle and, you know, 300 pound blocks around because it, it can get, especially when it's a studio thing, it's just kind of a, a fast paced thing. And you're in the back of trailers and there's ice all over the floor and you're on a, you know, smooth steel floor and it's slippery and it, it gets real chaotic for a long period of time. And then boom, then it's hurry up and wait, you know, but, um, <laughs> but it's hard, you know. It's it's hard to say. There's a lot. There's just been a lot of them, and and it's it's. I, I was something I always was admired about. Like for example, John Frazier, who's again one of the greatest special effects coordinators ever, and and um, I always just thought it's fun to like every every year, you know, in my house there's a rule. There's no Christmas movies allowed until Thanksgiving <laughs> night. That's when we that's when we start watching Christmas movies, but. I can sit and watch Jingle All the Way and Frost, and I don't think about it too much anymore. But you know, me and my guys, we made that snow. You know, we covered That's that awesome. neighborhood. We did this, so I, I remember a lot of the fun stuff with making it. So you know, I guess that's the thing where it's captured. You know, we have it forever on, on some of the work we've done. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you. I mean. I think the original Twister was 96, I think is yeah, when it yeah, came out. Yeah, I think okay. It was in 96 and, you know, the legacy. And I know uh, Bill Paxson, he's passed away, you know, but, you know, just just all those things and the, the way that that movie still persists. And uh, that's just got to be cool. You realize now I'm going to be texting you anytime I see snow and say, hey, did you did you help with that? So, <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to find out if you're uh, in that. <laughs> Pete, we are almost out of time. We've got a couple more questions, but uh, we've sure. really enjoyed having you on uh, this episode. Um, you know, as we, we'll, we'll, we'll close well, with let, the. Let, 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 hold on, I've yeah. known you a long time, Ethan. All right, and Jeff. Yeah. So I, like I, I, I known you from you know, um, um, from your all your your fleet management stuff and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. what 
made you guys start doing podcasts. Where, did, <laughs> we kind of have a second career, man. I mean, I, you know. <laughs> well, Jeff, uh, I, hey, I, we've never had somebody ask us a question like that. So we appreciate you asking, Jeff. You want yeah, to start that? So that's a good question. We, uh, you know, of course, we still do the route man software and we go to ice conventions and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And um, about a year and a half ago, I was um, just learning about advertising and social media and really hearing uh, about an opportunity that um, businesses everywhere and people in all kinds of different industries are underserved on podcasts and that that's a great medium for people to speak to their customers, to speak to their industry and to network. And um, I, I remember hearing a particular guy that was big into podcasting saying, whatever your business is, think about doing a podcast that speaks to your people and oh, just wow. contribute to the industry. And so I talked to Ethan and I think at the beginning of the conversation, it was kind of like, uh, what in the world are you talking about? I don't like hearing myself back. And, uh, <laughs> and by the end of the conversation, I think he decided we're going to roll with this. We'll try it out and see how it goes. And I think it's been really good for us to really be able to connect with people in our industry and uh, right. they get cool. to know us before we know them a lot of times. You know, Well, just, one thing Jeff didn't tell you is uh, he was doing uh, not necessarily a podcast, but he had a YouTube channel uh, for a while uh, and doing everyday carnivore uh, on the carnivore diet. And so he was doing some production stuff on that side. Mm -hmm. I've always been into doing uh, like a lot of them. I, I've done basically all the marketing until we got Santiago uh, on on here. So all the logo design, things like that. So I've always been into that editing videos. So it was right right in our, um, I, I guess, yeah, in our wheelhouse to be able to do so. And really cool. we started yeah. doing the first one. Um, one of my employees ended up uh, going to their home to uh, work uh, and we're like, hey, we got a we got an office that we can turn into a studio. So uh, <laughs> what you see, we leave up all the time so we can come in here, and make it easy and uh, have great guests on like you. So that's really how we got started is we just wanted to contribute back to the industry. You know, it's not uh, we don't try to make this a marketing campaign. If we get something from it, great. But, you know, really, the industry has given us so much. We wanted to give something back. And again, Again, people know you. They know that you've helped a lot with the AV stuff with the IPIA. They know that you have talent outside of just doing ice because they see you. Uh, you've always been so kind, helping vendors, everybody, but they still don't probably know you. And I'm hoping that they're able to get an opportunity to know Pete a little bit more and uh, so next time they see you, whether or not they want to ask you a question, so you, you might get more inundated on, um, <laughs> you know, I saw that Lexus commercial, you know, so and, and all that. Hey, you got to so, call Maria up and see if she'll let you broadcast live from the from the convention this year. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad you bring that up. So, uh, that's going to be something we're going to do at the IPIA. We're going to have a, a booth, uh, out there in the main hall, not in the convention center, but we're going to have some uh, hours. We're still working on the times that we're going to have those, mm -hmm. but we're going to have a few people come and we're going to have one or two episodes come out of that, uh, of just being, you know, at the IPI and when it's going to be live as far as we're discussing. So one-on-one, -on -one, uh, but we're not going to be broadcasting live, but we'll, right. we'll take it, right. uh, post-product. It, and it's gonna, it's a, it, I was going to say it's, it's, it's a beautiful property. They, 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 the IPI held it in Huntington beach there in, um, when they did their hundredth anniversary and it's, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful property. Yeah, it's going to be a good connection. Yeah, so, we, we've been there. One, I've been there one time. Jeff is not. So Right. So yeah. for everyone watching, come come look us up at the IPIA. If you're going to be in Huntington Beach, we want you to come by and say hi. Uh, maybe you'll be on the next episode of uh, the podcast. Yeah. So let's just wrap up here. And we want to ask you if you have any advice to give someone uh, whether it's uh, snow blowing, whether it's getting into the movie business, because I know we have several customers uh, that's over in the Georgia area. And I know that Georgia is becoming a, a hotbed for movie production as well and has been, it's been growing. You know, what advice would you have? And 
you know, it can be very generic or very specific. What well, anything you would give right. people? Either you mean getting into the the, the studio portion of, of of the ice business? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great if if they were looking to well, want to help or uh, get get the word out. Um, I guess you could just first look for their guides. A lot of them will have like a like a resource guide. Um, like, like we have one called the creative handbook and it has every, they have a, you know, an online version and then a, a hard copy version. And basically it's a, it's a directory for every single possible resource that you would need to make a movie. And mm. I, I, I'd look up again, if we're just talking about getting into the ice business, as far as this, the production world, TV, and film, then I'd look for a, a, a a resource guide like that, absolutely, you know, um, uh, advertising that, you know, it's probably the, the, the first thing. And then, you know, um, once you do that, you get to start calling, you know, craft service people and, and caterers, you know, the catering stuff, but it just depends on I me. Mean, I don't know how, how present the industry is going to be in those areas, you know, I mean, in, in mm-hmm. states, states, right. but I, I'd start with that, just kind of the obvious, just a resource guide and start calling, you know, the food service related stuff, you know, I don't, not likely they're going to have ice crushers, you know, in other parts of the country, yeah. I mean, you know, in fact, that's something that we were always challenged with if we were brought, like we were, we did something in Chicago and we had to have the ice crushers trucked over there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, very good. Well, that at least it's a kickstart for somebody. So, yeah. Well, Pete, we have absolutely enjoyed having you on the podcast. Yeah, today. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, everyone, we've been coming to you from the Route Man Studios from KCS headquarters in Pelham, Alabama. And we'll, um, we'll see you at the show. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Pete. Have a great day. All right. Take care, everybody.